I didn't support FISA. I think it was a unnecessary evasion of our Constitution. Senator Obama has said that when he becomes president, we'll take a look at this again, and we need to. We need to make sure that there are protections for the American people with eavesdropping. Yeah, you know, wouldn't it have been terrible if President Bush had gotten his way and Social Security monies would have been, been invested in this volatile stock market up today, down tomorrow, down again, up a little bit, down again. Senior citizens would have been throwing their hands in the air. What President Bush suggested was a bad idea then and even a worse idea now. First of all, President Bush hates Social Security. It's a government program. He tried to privatize that. He lost. Medicare is a government program. He wants to privatize that. And on a very historic vote this week, Ted Kennedy literally claimed off his sick bed at his own peril, came and broke the so-called impasse that we had. And as a result of Senator Kennedy, Social Security is not going to be privatized and Medicare is not going to be privatized. That, that is the result of the vote this Wednesday. And because of that, doctors will not receive a cut. Senior citizens will still be able to have their doctors. Veterans will be able to, through TRICARE, be able to receive the medicine and the care that they need. And Bush lost again by trying to go outside government and privatize a program that is unnecessarily too privatized. Social Security is, an, is a great program, the most successful program, in the social, uh, social program in the history of the world. Medicare, an imperfect program, but a good program. 99% of the people who are senior citizens are sick have the ability to go to a hospital because they have Medicare. During the time that the Republicans have held up by their filibusters, the housing bill, about 130,000 Americans have lost their homes. 130,000 while Republicans have been filibustering, obstructing here in Washington. We need to do something about the housing crisis and we need to do it three weeks ago, not today. We're going to pass the bill today, it'll go to the House, we'll get it back quickly. And hopefully by then, the President will join with us in recognizing that the housing market is in deep distress and he'll sign the bill. As far as costs that American people are bearing with energy, when the President took office, gas prices were $1.46 a gallon. Now the average is $4.12 a gallon and going up. We need to have the President be proactive to do something about this. First of all, he has to start telling the world that we're going to start selling our petroleum that we have in our reserve. We need to make sure that people understand that we have to do something about speculation and the President should join with this, with us on this. We have a bipartisan piece of legislation we're working on here in Congress to slow down speculation. Most everyone believes that the cost of gasoline is at least one-third higher than it should be because of people speculating on what the price is going to be tomorrow. And finally, I think it's important that the American people realize that we Democrats believe in more domestic production, but we believe we can't produce our way out of the problems we have. We have less than 3% of the oil in the world. The Republicans are saying drill, drill, drill. We have 68 million acres. They can drill on right now, less than two years ago. We freed 8 million acres in the Gulf of Mexico off the state of Louisiana, and not a single drill has been placed in that 8 million acres. This is only something that the oil companies has trumped up more drilling so that they can keep this artificially low quantity of oil and raise the prices of oil as they have done. Oil companies made last year 250 billions of profit. When is enough enough?